What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we're talking about the Galaxy S9 and, well, the iPhone X. And which one's better? So honestly, we're really not gonna go over specifications or anything like that because, you know, both of these phones are good performers, as we're all well aware of. Benchmark scores don't matter as much these days, and because of this, there's a lot more little things to focus on that might be important to you. So first up, let's talk about the displays. And over on the iPhone X, we have a 5.8 inch display, rocking a resolution of 2436 by 1125. Now, of course, we do have that notch, which you either love or you hate, but at the end of the day, it's a pretty nice and big bezel-less display. Now, if you're looking at the Galaxy S9 or S9 Plus, we have a 5.8 inch and 6.2 inch display sizes, respectively, both rocking a resolution of 2960 by 1440. Now, one thing that I do favor on the S9 and the S9 Plus over the iPhone 10 is the display. First of all, Samsung just crushes it in the display game. Now, both of these panels on the iPhone 10 or the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus are both OLED displays or AMOLED displays, but the S9 just looks so much nicer and, and it may not be accurate or as accurate, but honestly, when you're just a normal person going throughout your day looking at your phone, I would take the S9 all day long and it doesn't have a notch. The cool thing is though that on the S9, the bezels are just small enough to where everything just kind of blends in and they really don't get in the way. So no notch required there to have a nice looking display. Now let's talk about cameras here for a second because that's a very important factor when determining which smartphone you're going to buy. Definitely one of the top three factors. And on the iPhone 10, we have a dual camera setup here. So we have 12 megapixel wide and telephoto lenses. Now the wide lens actually has an aperture of f1.8, which is phenomenal. And the iPhone 10 takes some amazing pictures. I'm, I'm a really big fan of it all around. We do have dual optical image stabilization on both of the rear cameras on the iPhone 10, which is amazing. And you can take advantage of Apple's portrait mode for taking some pretty cool photos with a nice blurred background. But in my experience, it's not always been the greatest as far as accuracy is concerned. We do have 4K video recording at either 24, 30, or 60 frames per second on the iPhone 10, and slow-mo video recording at 1080p at either 120 or 240 frames per second. But that's where the competition steps in with something just a little bit better. Okay, not a little bit, but the Galaxy S9 actually has the capability of shooting slow-mo video at up to 960 frames per second. And sure, yes, it's 720p and it kind of hurts my heart a little bit, but... That is just insane to come out of a smartphone. Of course, you do also have 4K 60 recording as well over there, but let's talk about the camera on the S9 and S9 Plus. So if you get the Galaxy S9, you will not have a dual camera setup. Unfortunately, Samsung leaves that for the bigger model, which I think is kind of stupid, but it is what it is. Either way, both the S9 and S9 Plus have 12 megapixel sensors, and the cool thing here is what they're doing with the aperture. So on the iPhone 10, we only have an aperture of f1.8 on the wide angle lens. You can't change anything. It just, it is what it is as far as the low light capabilities go. But on the S9 and S9 Plus, we actually have a very wide aperture of f1.5. Now that's pretty awesome for low light photography, but the cool thing here is that it actually automatically switches between f1.5 and f2.4, or you can manually switch it in promo. Now this is an actual mechanical aperture change, which is absolutely insane to see on a smartphone and big ups to Samsung for figuring that one out. Now, like I said, you only get the telephoto lens on the Galaxy S9 Plus, which is kind of a sad trombone for a lot of people out there, but the camera on both of these, the main camera is pretty awesome. And I'll definitely be sure to leave links to galleries for both the iPhone 10 and the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus down in the description. So be sure to check that out if you wanna see full resolution images. Another thing to consider when choosing a smartphone, and a lot of people look at this, is the design of said smartphones. The build quality, how is it going to hold up over time? And what well, with both of these phones, they're both kind of glass sandwiching metal. So you're basically getting the same quality. It's just depending on whether or not you prefer the aesthetic of one over the other. So with the iPhone 10 design, you know, it's not the most forward thinking design, but it does look pretty slick. Though I have to say, I give the win full on to the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. That 
curved glass and everything. It just looks so clean. Of course, also implemented in the design, if fingerprint sensors are your thing, you're only gonna find that on the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus, as the iPhone 10 completely omitted it for Face ID, which actually does work very well in my experience. I've had zero problems with Face ID across the board. Now, the Galaxy phones do also have a face unlock as well, which is pretty quick, and I've never had any issues there, but the iPhone 10 Face ID definitely blows it out of the water. As far as audio goes, both of these devices have front-facing stereo speakers. Well, kind of. We have an earpiece speaker and a bottom-firing speaker, which emulates a stereo sound, and that's on both the iPhone and the Galaxy devices, so no need to worry there. They both have pretty solid audio. But one thing that's not pretty solid across the two is actually found on, or not found on, the bottom. We have a headphone jack on the Galaxy devices, and you won't find that on the iPhone. I'm pretty happy Samsung's kept that around. Like, seriously, thanks. Obviously, if you're making a decision between these two, it's going to also come down to the battle between iOS and Android. And y'all can duke that out in the comments if you want to, but I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. They just offer different things that some people are going to be gravitated towards. For example, the iPhone 10 has iMessage or any iOS device for that matter. And a lot of people cling on to that for life because those blue bubbles mean everything to a lot of people. And you won't get that on Android. You'll get an equivalent like Hangouts or something which you can actually use on the computer or on your phone. And that's nice, but you're definitely not getting the same experience there. Now, as far as Android goes, you do have a lot more customization as a lot of you know about. You can install different launchers. You can go as far as even rooting the device if that's something that you're comfortable with. There are a lot of different customization options. And while iOS is catching up in that department, it's never going to be quite the same. Now, when it comes to battery life, this is a tricky one because Clearly with the S9 Plus, you're gonna get better battery life than the S9. It's just a bigger phone, it's got a bigger battery. Boom, there you go. Now with the iPhone 10, well, it's kind of a toss up. It really depends on how you use your smartphone. I mean, if you're on it every day with the screen at full brightness, your battery life is going to be less than somebody that uses it a few times a day obviously. So that's going to be a tougher battle to decide, but I'll be sure to leave my reviews for both of these phones linked below if you want to know more about battery life and make a decision for yourself. Now, like I said, durability is a factor as well, but to be honest, I feel like if I dropped either of these phones from any considerable distance onto a hard surface, one of these sides is going to crack. It's just how it is. They're glass. They're going to break. Yeah. On the bright side, if you do drop one of those phones and you're rocking a D-brand skin, well, you won't actually be able to see the cracked glass on the back. And there's actually some pretty cool skins that you can pick up. And if you want to check some out, I will leave a link to D-brand below for you. It's a nice way to customize your device without having to worry about seeing cracked glass in case you do drop your phone. I mean, personally, there are a lot of things that I'm gravitated towards as far as the Apple ecosystem goes. I really do like iMessage, I'm not gonna lie. But at the same time, man, that camera on the Galaxy S9 or S9 Plus, pretty solid stuff, and that design is just, mmm, dead sexy. I do wanna know, though, what your favorite feature on any of these phones is in the comments section below, so be sure to drop a comment, and if you wanna see a giveaway of one of these, possibly, hit that thumbs up button for me. Anyway, that about wraps it up for this video. Let me know which phone you would pick in the comments section below. Like I said, leave this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This is Dom, and I'll catch you in the next video.